Huh. I don't think that's enough. Welcome to Handlebar Workshops. We're in the craft room today where we're going to steampunk up a hoop skirt. Here's the hoop skirt, as you saw being worn oh. earlier, with the same corset and top. This is not steampunk enough. First thing we're gonna do is we're going to open up the front and I want most of this wiring here in the front to be exposed. I don't want to open it too high in the front, so I'm going to open it up to here. I also need to make this longer in the end. I want it to touch the ground in the sides and back. I'm going to turn her towards me a little bit so I can find the middle. And I know it's the middle because in the back here, I have a drawstring right in the center of her back. So I want to make sure that that drawstring stays right at the center when I'm cutting the front. So, and follow down the bottom here. It looks like this is the center. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it, just so I can mark that. I'm going to measure from my center point to this cut here, because that's about where on the hip line I want it to line up with, about. I mean, it's not exact here. <laughs> So I'm going to make a cut on the other side from my center point, the same distance that this cut on the side. I have my center line snip and my 220 inches. So I have basically going to, at the bottom, there's going to be a 40 inch opening. I don't want a 40 inch opening at the top waistline area here. So I'm going to angularly <laughs> at an angle go in. Um, so to do that, to do that, I'm just going to take my little gold marker here and I want the top to be at about my hip what. I'm going to make marks on this, not the waist hoop, which we're keeping, not the upper hip hoop that we're keeping, but this hoop, I'm going to make marks of where the line of the hip is. And so I'm going to take my ruler. By the way, this dummy is set to my measurements. If you don't have a dummy, you don't need a dummy for this project. You're going to just have to put it on an awful lot to see where all your alignments are. But my hip line is right here. I want to go straight down and just make a little mark there with my gold marker. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Now we're going to connect or cut the fabric from here to here on both sides. There it is all cut out, and you can see these floppy <laughs> hoops here. Um, no issue there. I don't care that they're floppy. They have to be there for support. That's as short as I want to go. The only reason I was thinking about taking this bottom hoop out is that it does cause the skirt to expand out an additional four inches. So taking out this bottom hoop will reduce my overall profile by four inches. That being said, I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to use my wire cutters instead of cutting the fabric all the way around to get that hoop out. I don't want to have any f more frayed edges than I plan on having as frayed edges. By taking that hoop out, I now am able to um, see that this is going to hang nicely down from that point. I am still going to make it a little longer so it does touch the ground, which means I need to add some good length. 
let's attach our ruffler foot. We first need to remove this foot. And here is our scary looking ruffling foot. This is, this here will be facing the back of the sewing machine. So it goes on like that. This part right here is going exactly where the original foot was. So it goes around that post. Now while doing that, this claw here needs to go over this screw here. Once you have that claw over that post and your foot attachment aligned with the screw hole, you're going to take your little screw that you are very careful not to lose and fit it back in that hole to tighten. And I like to tighten it just a little bit with my fingers first, then go back in with the screwdriver. Make sure you don't over tighten. It'll make your next change out more, just more difficult. So then our thread here has to be fed through the foot up here and out the back. And we have the foot attachment on there. As the needle comes up and down, it will cause this mechanism to go up and down and go through a timing. You can set how many stitches, it's no stitches, so no ruffles, um, 12 stitches per ruffle, six stitches for ruffle, and one stitch per ruffle. So that means this part here, every 12 stitches is going to pull in a little bit of fabric into my stitching, creating that ruffle. So as you can see, there's been some changes already. So after I went all the way around that bottom, I just pinned everything on, nothing is sewn on yet. I then cut that roll in half and ruffled half lengths and added a ruffle here and a ruffle all the way up and around and I went all the way around this tier here of the hoop skirt as well. Then I found a spool of this lace tool and I went ahead and did a light ruffle on that and went all the way around just underneath this hoop and that's it. Just to get, that's where we're at there. Now I did start making my window panels. A dear friend of mine gave me a bunch of these little panels of butterfly lace. Wasn't sure what I was gonna do with them, but I found out that if I cut them down and get something like that, and then I would have some panels with the smaller butterflies. So then I just did a panel here. I cut out the fabric and put in a panel of the small butterflies. Then I cut out some of the hoop skirt fabric here and put in one of the whole butterflies. I alternated it up and down all the way around. So if I com completely bring around this way, you can see I have one of those windows right there. And then here's a window here with the butterfly. Plan is to get this all hand sewn on. I'm just going to easily whip stitch it on. I need to make still a plan for this up here. I want some belting to make this thicker. This is that bottom edge that I put, added on the fabric to the bottom of the hoop skirt. And there is one of those windows that we were talking about earlier that needs to be sewn in. The ruffles that I've made from the antique lace, I'm going to use to kind of break up how big this section is that I put on here. I will be just slightly tucking under my seam allowance and putting that all the way along just under the window ledge so that it's a little less fabric. So I'm cutting, basically cutting down for the eye 
And then it also shows my transitioning from the cream or antique white to bright white. And then up here you can kind of see some off-white. Alright, but then I think I'll be okay with this large amount here once I get that attached. So that's going to go all the way around the bottom hoop of this skirt. I'm just going to pin it on. I'm not sewing anything on permanently yet. Here I've pinned it on there. And then I went ahead and pinned two rows here all the way around the skirt. And I'm really liking how that looks. So I'm thinking I'm going to take the rest of my scrap lace that I harvested and make even more of these ruffles to continue these ruffles all the way up to the waistline. Because when I took, looked at it, when I laid this out, let's see. So the next layer would look kind of like that. And then one more, and then I think I should be good. Two more layers and it'll be this pretty little lace upper. So here you can see that I've continued wrapping this particular lace all the way around. And then I found another accent of white. I went all the way up to the point of the waistline. I've decided I like how this looks so far and I need to pin down, well, sew down all of these rows of lace. So I'm just going to be going through and whip stitching so I'll come in from the back, come right through the lace and forward in a similar colored thread. And I'm just going to be going right around through the lace all the way around, just constantly spinning and turning until all of these layers of lace, as well as all of the things I've put down here, all this here, the panels I put in with the little butterflies, are all going to be stitched on now. Now, of course, if you get up really close, you're going to see these stitches. They're large, but we're just putting them there to hold the lace in place. And then the next layer of lace will hide those. So it doesn't have to be perfect, doesn't have to be neat. It's for costuming, it's not a professional outfit. So I don't have to make sure the stitches are even and anything. And like I said, the stitches aren't going to show so I don't have to be super neat with these. Everything is sewn on. So everything that was just pinned on, all this ruffling, is now stitched on with a simple whip stitch. So I'm adding this garland here. It is actually Christmas tree garland. So I will be, I will be stitching this down and doing the same. back here. Here we are trying out some belts on those front open hoops. So the bottom belt is just a plain white. The top one has a few little embellishments on it that I'm working with. There's a belt buckle I'm reusing on this side and then the bottom belt buckle is over there. Here you see I attached the belts to the already existing wires that create the hoop skirt. They created too much weight, so they were kind of dangling down forward. So I attached a belt to the top hoop underneath the lace, measured how far down I wanted the first belted hoop to start, and attached the two together with E6000, which is what I used to attach the belts to the wire hoops. Then I measured again from that top leather hoop to the bottom leather or belt hoop, another strap. Actually, that's one strap. There's one strap. At Goodwill, I found a mini skirt of layered lace. I just cut that mini skirt into little squares and then covered all the remaining empty spaces with those squares. And also I need to think about if I want to leave this plain underneath this lace. Let's put this boa 
all the way around the skirt. It can be attached by hot glue or I just basically went around in circles and whip stitching around the boa, around the wire for the hoop skirt, and then back around. It goes from this top hoop belt all the way around the back to the other side. The first exposed hoop where we put the feathers all the way around. The second exposed hoop now has a chain. I did this by stitching inwards from the back, going through a couple of the little loops, going back in, coming out, going through the loops, and continued to do that all the way around the skirt. Okay, let's add some embellishments. Let's zoom in. One did not look like enough, so more were added. Also, once I had it all together, I noticed that this post, the support line here, was off center with the center of the skirt. So I detached it and reattached it by moving it over. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and please make a comment below if you'd like to see more like this. Thanks!